Hi, I'm Dave Artley with the Denver Brass, and today we're going to talk about the fundamentals of breathing. There's a few things to remember about breathing when it applies to being a brass player. The first of all is that this is our most fundamental skill. We are brass wind players, so the wind is what makes everything possible that we do on the instrument. It creates the sound that we're trying to achieve, it achieves the range that we're trying to achieve, and it impacts so importantly on technique and obviously musicality. In order to breathe properly, it is a skill we must practice. We have to be mindful about, and we have to be thinking about the process. Our goal is to eventually um, break down break down the skill so that eventually the skill becomes part of our operating system part of the background it happens automatically and that will frees up our brain to work on music and technique etc but in order to get there we have to practice it over and over the brain will understand these concepts very quickly the body only learns through repetition so even though we understand what we're trying to do for breathing. We have to practice it with the body to achieve, in essence, the muscle memory of breathing. And finally, a little note on breathing is that isolating any skill in your practice routine, in other words, put the instrument down, put the mouthpiece down, and practice just that specific skill. Or if, you're, if it's a tonguing exercise, practice just the articulations with the wind. Isolating any skill makes for quicker learning. Let's take a look at breathing. So, in order to, to give you an example of what a proper breath for a, a, any wind instrument, technically, or certainly for brass wind, uh, I'm going to tap into some of my other senses. A good breath has a sound, it has a look, and it has a feel. So I'm going to use my eyes, I'm going to use my touch, and I'm going to use my ears to help establish a proper breath. So let's start by letting me demonstrate a breath. And I'm going to use my hand, I'm going to put my hand on my belly here right at the diaphragm and I'm going to put my other hand out here so this is these are where I'm going to feel my my touch this hand is the visual I want you to look at this so this is a skill that you might want to practice in a mirror or if you have a camera set up take pictures of yourself doing this take a video of yourself doing this uh, and the sound of course we're going to use our ears here's a good breath let's see if you can pick up on this Let's start with the sound. What is the sound that you hear? And I want you to think of it in terms of what vowel am I making? Let me do it again and let's see if you can listen to that vowel. What vowel do you hear? Yes, the O. The O vowel. Now, the O vowel is, one, is our most relaxed shape of our mouth and our throat. It's open. It, it establishes the shape of the wind column that we want coming in, but more importantly, it establishes the shape of the wind column that we want moving out through the instrument. And the other thing about it is, again, it's relaxed. As we're starting our playing and our breathing, we want tension only here with our embouchure. Everything from here on down to until we get to the very low abdominal muscles is to be relaxed. So there's the sound, O. Oh. And that sound, O, oh, was both on the inhale and on the exhale. Now, the other thing you might have heard was a O oh, on the inside, inhale and a toe on the exhale. And that was me using, starting to use a little bit of our articulation. 
the T syllable, okay? You can do this oho or oto. Let's look at the look. So for the look, I'm putting my hand here on my belly, and, and this is part of what oftentimes with my younger players, I'll talk about belly breathing. Uh, technically, we're talking about breathing from the diaphragm. And let's just look at this diagram of the diaphragm and what the diaphragm does, okay? Um, the diaphragm is this muscle that separates the abdomen from the chest. And when we inhale, this muscle contracts and goes, flattens out, okay? When we relax, when that relaxes, it comes back into position and the air is pushed out of the lungs. When that contracts, it's actually creating space up here in the lungs, creating a vacuum, and the air rushes in. So that's one of the key things to remember is we're not sucking in, we're not sucking in air. We are making room for the air to fill our lungs. And obviously, if we make more room, then we get a bigger breath. Why does this hand expand out like this? Why does my belly expand when I inhale? When the diaphragm flattens out, all this stuff has to go somewhere, right? And some of us have a little bit more stuff than others. But as that it contracts down, this has to go out here to make room for that contraction. That creates the vacuum. The air rushes in, and we have a full inhalation. As we relax that, that air moves out. One of the kind of things neat about this diagram is when you exhale, it talks about the, the diaphragm relaxes and the air is pushed out of the lungs. If we ever tighten that or bear down on that or hold our breath, the diaphragm is no longer relaxed. And the moment we have that tension here in the diaphragm, the air stops, the wind stops. And therefore, our sound stops, our technique stops, all of those things that are so important for brass players and wind players. We've stopped feeding the instrument the wind that it needs to function. With that in mind, our upper body is always relaxed. We never bear down or we never tighten. We always are relaxed and let the diaphragm and the wind do its work for us. The other corollary is that we never hold our breath. If we hold our breath, we're not relaxed. We've stopped the diaphragm from moving. So that means there's no air moving through the instrument anymore. When we're taking our inhale, I can do this in several motions. I'm still open. I'm, I'm not bearing down. I'm still open. I can kind of exhale a little bit slightly, and then I can let the diaphragm truly flow, let the relax in the air flow, okay? The other thing that's important to think about in this, because of our diaphragm, is our posture. If we're sitting like this, we really can't make room to breathe. Oh, oh, try that once. When you're bending over, is it easier or more difficult to breathe? The obvious answer is it's much more difficult to let this work. So our posture is very important. If, if we sag, we're not efficient. I call um, our good posture, I call it a puppet posture. If I'm sitting like this and I'm a puppet, if think of it like I have a string going down through the, my head to the base of my spine, and if I just pull that string upward, I lengthen all of this breathing apparatus. I lengthen it out, and that lengthening gives me more room to expand and fill up and flow the wind. And if you have any questions, we'll have to look for email questions, but that's the basics of the diaphragm and, again, the look of our, of our breathing. Now, one of the more little aspect of, of all that we're doing here, okay? 
these other senses really help our brain figure this out. Again, brain and body are connected. Brain will figure it out pretty quickly, but the body needs to have these messages. So one of the things I do with, for myself and with my students is when I'm starting this breath, I'll do a few taps here. Tap, 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 tap. Right on the diaphragm, right where I want to expand. When you tap, you notice that you feel with your hand, but you also feel with the belly. That means it's sending messages up to the brain through the nerve system. What we're sending to the brain is this right here is where I want to expand. I don't want to do this. I'm not tapping here. I don't want to expand up here because that's not really the diaphragm. I'm not making room for, to fill those lungs. I'm not creating space. I want to f down here. The other thing you'll find out about uh, when you try this, if, if you're new to this, is that it's a little bit counterintuitive, which means it's, it's backwards from what seems normal. We kind of think we should suck in our belly to suck in air. But remember, we're not sucking in air. We're creating space. So tap, 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 tap. Send that message to the brain. Right here is where I want to expand. And I think about pushing that belly out. If all you do is push that belly out, it creates space because the way we do that is with our diaphragm and you'll get a breath so if you just think sucking my gut a little bit here and one and now I'm gonna push it out there's the expansion that we're looking for one little more little aspect on the look when when I'm filled up with air and I relax and let the air wind start flow what does this look like See how it collapses very much like a balloon, if you fill the balloon and you just let the air out through a, through a tight embouchure, which is what we're actually doing. The air, the wind just collapses and creates the wind. So using a little toy here, the expansion. Let's talk about the feel, okay? Now, my other hand was up here for the feel. And as I did this, what I'm feeling is wind. I can feel the wind moving against the back of my hand. I use the back of my hand because the back of the hand is a little bit more sensitive. Why do I have it out here? feel the wind yeah well I can feel the wind here or actually I'm I'm pretty good at this I could feel the wind way out here <sighs> one of the things that we tap into our brain is the, the the ability to visualize when we picture things in our brain when we visualize something uh, we're much more effective at, at conveying commands than breaking everything down into words so I can say oh I want to blow out to my hand here but really what I want to do I want to visualize blowing wind through my trumpet and on out beyond to the audience so if I'm doing it here I'm only really thinking about blowing to my mouthpiece but when I'm doing here I'm picturing blowing that steady stream of wind right through my instruments all the way out to the audience that's why I do this distance. That distance works pretty well for trombone players who have their trombone here. They can, they can picture blowing through that bell because um, they've got more tubing to go. But again, it's the visualization of through the, through the instrument out to the audience. What am I feeling? I'm feeling wind. And what is the definition of wind? Well, some, some people, you're right, some people say air. Wind is something more than just air, isn't it? Air is here, but wind is, yes, moving. So I always ask my students, what um, makes the leaves on the trees move? And of course, the obvious answer is wind, yes. So I'm not only thinking about air, I'm thinking about wind. And that's the moving the air, again, through the instrument. So we've got a good posture, we've got the sound. We've got the look, the expansion, 
Let me collapse. And we've got the feel of that moving wind. Um, our upper body is always relaxed. We never hold our breath because you can't be relaxed and hold your breath. And we've got our good puppet posture. Remember to press like or subscribe if you'd like to see more Denver Brass mini masterclasses. <laughs>